Welcome back. The maker of ChatGPT is now diving into AI generated video. Meet Sora, OpenAI's new text to video generator. The tool uses generative artificial intelligence to instantly create short videos based on written commands. The videos you're seeing on the screen right now were generated by the new tech. For example, this one was made by simply asking Sora to show reflections in the window of a train traveling through the Tokyo suburbs. While Sora isn't the first to demonstrate this kind of technology, industry analysts point to the high quality of the tool's videos displayed so far, noting that its introduction marks a significant leap for both OpenAI and the future of text-to-video generation. But the technology also raises fears about potential ethical and societal implications, though the tool isn't yet publicly available. The launch of Sora marks the end of another week filled with rapid developments in the realm of technology. Let's welcome media and tech consultant Mohit Rajans to give us some insights into some of the top headlines. Mohit, we have to kick it off with the latest buzz in the world of AI. What are your initial reactions to Sora? Louis, I know it seems like I come on this show quite a bit and really hype up what is happening in artificial intelligence. And it's not going to stop today because I'm super excited about what OpenAI just released this week, which is Sora, which is text to video. So imagine this. Imagine you want to describe to one of your coworkers how you think something should work, or you're getting ready to present an idea to one of your teachers about how you think you would come up with a solution. Imagine being able to prompt in words, in natural language, the language that you're familiar with, and generating a video to come out almost instantly. That's what the promise is with this new product that OpenAI has released that has a lot of people really impressed with the original beta testing that's happened with it. I personally can already see so many layers of usage for this that will really disrupt the way people use video for communication. The question is, how do we get to a place where even just the idea of what is being replicated in this versus what is just being shot normally and is real, how are we going to decipher what's what? Jumping off your last answer, which industries will benefit from a text to video AI and which ones do you predict might face some challenges? Well, I don't necessarily think there's going to be one industry that won't benefit from it. I think instead it just opens up a new method of communication where people just like text messaging or just like video messaging caught on that they'll be able to utilize this as another tool in the way that they'll integrate it into other communication systems. It'll become very annoying in some cases and it'll be overused and it might just become a pop culture moment. But I think what it just leads to is just this rapid move that we're seeing in artificial intelligence, where so many people are going to be able to use these tools that it's it's just going to be a little bit tough. It's going to be on one end, this, uh, all of a sudden, too much too soon, but it's also going to be a phenomenal amount of things it, it can be it can mean for people of all different age levels. As you mentioned earlier, do you anticipate one of the challenges with Sora might be differentiating what a human has made and what a text to video AI model has made? Well, I think there's going to be several problems that are starting to arise as a result of this getting this good. So one is the fact that on social media, you're not going to be able to decipher between seeing something that's cool and interesting and something that might be labeled as fake news. All the social media companies right now are scrambling to figure out an identifier for what is synthetic media, which is what this is being described as, versus natural media, which is what we're used to. But I think you and I both know, Louis, that even with filters, you can make something look very different than when it was originally shot. And I think that's where the blurred line is going to really be um, out of focus in this situation, which is, you know, how do who's going to set the guardrails to actually make sure that we have a label associated with media that's being created like this? And then also, what is the natural expectation between you and I? If I am handing in an assignment to you that you want shot by myself and designed by myself and produced by myself, is that any different than something somebody going into chat GPT and creating a visualization representation? presentation for what they're delivering. Well, it's always fun to play around with these programs. Our viewers can catch you and your insights at thinkstart.ca. Thanks so much for speaking with us. As always, Mohit. Take care, Louis.